Hey, I'm Ryan Bingham, and this is The Blues Kitchen. Ryan Bingham has just released his sixth studio album, American Love Song. We catch up with Ryan a few hours before his sold-out London show to discuss the new LP in detail. The Golden Globe, Grammy and Oscar-winning songwriter opens up about his childhood, his transition from rodeo rider to singer, and his first live performances in parking lots on the back of flatbed trucks. Ryan also discusses his memories of Guy Clark and performs a stunning cover of Dublin Blues. And while you're watching, like this video and subscribe to the channel for regular episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Ryan, welcome to The Blues Kitchen. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us, man. Mm -hmm. In a short while, we're going to hear your version of Guy Clark's Dublin Blues. Mm -hmm. But in some ways, I'm kind of at a loss where to start because I've watched a load of interviews and a load of reading, listened to your most recent record, and your story is kind of bonkers. You know, you moved around a lot as a kid. I understand, but before you started playing guitar, you were riding like rodeos mm -hmm. as well. Um, moving from school to school, which I heard you explain, some of those schools like more like prisons or a penitentiary. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could give us a little bit of a background of like your formative years, kind of up to the moment when you first started <laughs> playing guitar. <laughs> so I was born in a small town in uh, southeastern New Mexico, a little town called Hobbs, right on the state line in New mm -hmm. Mexico and Texas. And my family uh, ranched out there. They raised, had a cattle ranch, raised sheep, and that's what they did. My grandfather was a rancher, cowboy. My dad and my uncles all grew up cowboy, and my uncle rode bulls in the rodeo. And so as a little kid, I kind of got into that. You know, that's what the extracurricular activity, you know, around <laughs> Did that there feel was. like the path you were on? Yeah, you know. And so I just kind of grew up around doing that. My grandfather sold that ranch when, right, about the time I came along, was born, and okay. everybody went into work in the oil fields. And um, from there, we moved around a lot. We first we went out to Bakersfield, California, oh, really? the West Coast, we were there for a few years, and then came back to Texas and kind of West Texas area like mm -hmm. Odessa and Midland, and this these kind of rough oil field kind of. We just towns. basically following the oil. Yeah, just following the work around. I mean, it was kind of a mix of that and my old man trying to hold down a job and keep it all together, you know, so the rodeo kind of thing that was something that I started doing at a young age and kind of I think at the very beginning was kind of established sort of like my identity, you know, and who I was and I also grew up you really wanting to be like my dad and uncles and grandfather, yeah, yeah, you know, and you wanted to grow up be a cowboy like that. Real Texan man. Yeah. But at the same time we were moving around a lot to a lot of these different towns and cities that uh, there are a lot of, uh, Texas is a very kind of diverse place culturally and um, from the west to the south and all that stuff. So I was really kind of thrown into a lot of different environments and different cultures growing yeah. up and would have to adapt, you know, everywhere I went. And um, at the same time, kind of hold on to this little piece of who I was and where I was from. And now I'm kind of here, you know, <laughs> grown up a bit, hopefully, and, and just, Kind of realize that I'm a, you know, have a lot of those different places within me that I've kind of adapted over the years. Yeah. I heard this wonderful story, and if it's a bit of a myth, feel free to embellish because it's, it's, <laughs> right. it's a good one. But I heard that some of your first performances, seeing to other people, were actually in the back of the car on the mm -hmm. way to the, the rodeo. It's the first time you ever sung to anyone. Mm -hmm. And then when you'd arrive at these radios, they were some of the first bands that you were watching as well. Mm -hmm. Is that is that right? Yeah, it is right. It, uh, you know, my mother bought me a guitar when I was about 16 and um, I was still rodeo and I was riding bulls and on the weekends you know me and my friends would get load up in the truck and we'd go on these road trips and to these rodeos and the guitar would always just be in the back seat you know sometimes we'd be out in really remote places where you couldn't pick up a radio station and I'd get the guitar and we would start playing songs and just kind of like one and two chord songs and making up just you know yeah. funny stuff about our weekend adventures and things like that and it turned in we'd get to the rodeo and afterwards uh, we'd sit in the parking lot and I'd sit on the tailgate of the truck and we'd have a few beers and sit around and play and it kind of turned into a thing where uh, quite a few people would come out to the parking lot for the party you know? <laughs> really? and some of the local <laughs> bars in town were wondering why people weren't coming to the bar and so you they really got hip to it and they started booking me to play in the bar so the people would come over to the bar and drink beers. So oh really? That's how I kind of started getting gigs and that's it was really weird. something I didn't really plan on. It was just kind of, you know, one thing led to another and next thing I knew I was in a 
15 passenger van, you know, playing gigs across the country and making records and all of that. So that's how it all, all started was with the rodeo stuff. So fast forward, six albums, various Grammy Awards, and all these kind of, I mean, you've had a roller coaster ride <laughs> up until this point, but your new album, American Love Song, I mean, congratulations. Thank you. It's an amazing record. The album kind of, to me, this is my interpretation. I don't want you to think that yeah, this, yeah. this is how it is yeah. or anything. It's like an album of two sides. You know, you've got mm -hmm. this kind of rock and roll, almost like slightly funky kind of road music. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these really vulnerable moments where you're kind of bearing all and wearing your heart on your sleeve. Mm -hmm. I wonder when you're writing those more honest songs, can I say that, like walls? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether it's a painful process, a cathartic process, whether these things just come out. It's a bit of both, all of that. You know, I think this songwriting in general for me has always really been very kind of a therapeutic thing and like some of those songs in the early days in the back of the truck writing were songs that uh, I wrote never really intending to play for anybody you know my family kind of went in separate ways when I was young and I ended up kind of having to go on my own kind of early and just the things I'd experienced at a young age like that the guitar and writing songs became a way of talking about a lot of things and dealing with that stuff so it is very cathartic and uh, painful sometimes but it helps to would always help to get that stuff off my chest you know and to say it so um, this album in particular was maybe a, more layered than maybe some of the previous records and songs that I've written as in you know it was really about a lot of the things I have ex experienced growing up in America as a young kid moving around and the hustle and the struggle of all of that, but very much reflecting on kind of the times and you know what's kind of been going on in the country over the last few years and how some yeah. of the current events just really reminded me of things that I went through um, when I was a kid, you know? So I think uh, that was something that I was very kind of aware of maybe or conscious of when I was writing this record. There's a particular lyric in, um, in Walls but I knew somehow there would come a day when I stood my ground and kept the wolves at bay. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's really interesting when it kind of juxtaposition for me because it sounds, they're the words of wisdom, mm -hmm. but also very much there's a childlike naivety to it. Mm -hmm. And I assume that you're kind of writing that in present day, but connecting to a way you felt when you were a young, young boy. Very much. I, and I think, you know, when I was writing that song, it was, when I first started writing the record, I, I literally, like drew a map of the United States and I would put points on all the places that I had lived in different towns oh, really? and different places. And so kind of the narrative of the album as a concept album or whatever you may call it, um, I wanted to represent these different places and these different cultures I experienced and all the different stuff. And writing that song is, you know, kind of talking about it being layered and some of the mm. songs being layered and meaning different things. It was very much about moving around and like being in these new places and new schools and things um being the new kid in town you know lots of fights and people coming after you for being the new kid and just pe bullies you know those guys those people that are you know tend to be there and kind of at the same time when i was like halfway writing through writing this song the parkland school shooting happened in florida and just the overall epidemic of gun violence in our country, and yeah. particularly the shootings that have been happening at schools, you know? You know, I was watching these kids and these people kind of organize the whole March for Our Lives movement. And I was, as I was watching this, I started seeing how people were responding to that, you know, and uh, spe specifically grown men and women, how they were responding to these kids online with the kind of rhetoric and bullying the language that they were using against these kids, you know, yeah. and the NRA and the whole, that whole scene, you know, I was just really taken aback by how these people were picking on these kids in a way. And it reminded me of when I was a kid yeah. moving around. And so I felt very compelled to write that song and maybe show some solidarity with those kids. And, and, in, and on top of that as well, just kind of people who have faced discrimination in general, you know, to to write about something that was inclusive, broad and inclusive. So that's very much what that song is about. May we talk a bit about Guy Clark? Because mm -hmm. our viewers in a short while are going to see your performance of Dublin Blues. Okay. And your timing is absolutely impeccable on this because last week I interviewed Steve Earle. Right on, yeah. And Steve has just done an album of Guy Clark tunes, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you, sure you know about. Mm -hmm. And Dublin Blues in particular is one that really stands out to me. I mean, it's perhaps his most well-known tune. But what was it about that tune that really 
stood out to you? Was that a lyric that grabbed you straight away or is there another thing that really was the calling of that, that tune? Really all of it. Um, st st not only Guy Clark, but Steve Earle, um, a guy named Terry Allen, which is how mm -hmm. I, I first met Guy Clark was through Terry Allen. Oh, really? And uh, those guys were like the really big influences on me, being a kid from like West Texas, that area. Guy was from Monaghan's, not far from where I, I lived. Yeah. Terry was from Lubbock. My mom was from there. I got family from there. Um, so I was kind of, to hear these guys singing songs about that area, the geographical area where I was from, it just, you know, I really gravitated to them at a young age. So whenever I got to a place where I was really playing music and kind of doing it for a living, and to meet those guys and for them to kind of take me under their wing and take me on the road with them, and I had, was fortunate to play some shows with I them. I have no idea that you did yeah, that. Yeah, okay. like back some of the very first gigs I ever got, um, just got Terry Allen and another guy named Joe Ely. Okay. Uh, out of Lubbock, Texas. Uh -huh. And Joe took me on the road with him. I were met you opening Terry, up? Opening up for Joe. And then there were a couple of shows where it was, uh, where Joe was playing an acoustic show. It was with Joe Ely, John Hyatt, Guy Clark, and I think Lyle Lovett. What a lie. And um, we get to this show, and I'm in the crowd, and I had met Guy, and we'd played some songs together, just kind of hanging out at parties. and. Um, in the middle of the show, Guy Clark gets up off the, they're all sitting on stools, you know, and it's, yeah. it's a pretty big show. I think there was probably a thousand or more people there, you know, and he calls me up to play a song Whoa. out of the audience, you know, and um, I get up and I play a song and it's pretty heavy, you know, for him to stand up and give me his guitar and ask me to play a song. Was, um, so that was just kind of the early connection what did you play? I got there. I don't even remember what I played. <laughs> I think I played an old song, uh, it's called Snake Eyes, okay. an old song from back then. Sorry, I kind of lost track of what I was thinking there, what the question no, was no. about Guy, but um, I don't know. All of their songwriting and the way that they kind of, or not they, I know Guy has passed away now, but the way he looked at the world and the way he interpreted the world through his songs just very much aligned with kind of how I was seeing things at a young age. And yeah. so it really meant a lot, that music, you know, it did. Uh, at a time when kind of pop radio and some of the messaging and music and songs is not very helpful, maybe I could say, for a young kid. That's being very polite. <laughs> Those songs were very helpful. You know, yeah. they really gave me a, a, a window into, to look into another world out there that I didn't think was accessible or, or available to me. Yeah. And I just like, you know, it just kind of it validated some feelings that I had about the way the world was going and how things were happening in that those, those little small towns I was living in. And just that uh, act of generosity, you know, with him like kind of handing me his guitar and saying, telling a bunch of strangers that, uh, hey, y'all listen to this kid play a song. How know? old were you at the time? Gosh, I couldn't have been in my early 20s, you know. Wow. One opportunity. Four, three, five, yeah. And an honor as well. Yeah, a big honor, yeah. I think it's probably time you introduce your tune. All right, uh, this is The Dublin Blues, written by Guy Clark. Well, I wish I was in Austin. Mm -hmm. Chili Paula Bar, drinking mad dog margaritas, not caring where you are. Here I sit in Dublin mm -hmm. Rolling cigarettes Holding back and choking back the shakes with every breath Oh, forgive me all my anger Forgive me all my faults There's no need to forgive me Thinking what I thought well, I loved you from the get-go And I love you till I die I loved you on the Spanish steps The day you said goodbye well, I am just a poor boy mm -hmm. Works my middle name If money were the reason Well, I would not be the same I stand up and be counted mm -hmm. 
stand up to the truth. I walk away from trouble, but I can't walk away from you. So forgive me all my anger, forgive me all my faults. There's no need to forgive me for thinking what I thought. I loved you from the get-go, honey, and I love you till I die. I loved you on the Spanish steps the day you said goodbye. Well, I have been to Fort Worth. I have been to Spain And I have been too proud To come in and out of the rain And I have seen David mm -hmm. I've seen the Mona Lisa too and I have heard Doc Watson play the Columbus Stockade Blues. Oh, forgive me all my anger. Forgive me all my faults. There's no need to forgive me for thinking what I thought. I loved you from the get-go, and I love you till I die. I loved you on the Spanish steps. Be say goodbye. Subscribe to The Blues Kitchen for live performances and interviews with the hottest blues, soul, country and roots musicians in the world today. Down at Peggy's Roadhouse on Highway 69 Shake your dollar down in my cup